History tells the tale of an infamous serial killer who plagued the streets of London during the year of 1888. While the police had multiple suspects, not a one was ever officially arrested for the crimes. The serial killer became known as Jack the Ripper. In this episode, in a multi-part video series, we'll dive into the psychology of Jack the Ripper. In the following video, we'll get to know each of the canonical five, followed by the non-canonical victims of the Ripper, then his letters to police and papers, the suspects, and finally, who I believe to be the true identity of the Ripper. Between August and September of 1888, within London's East End known as Whitechapel, five brutal murders took place in the late hours of the night. While there were other murders thought to be performed by Saucy Jack, only five are official. These are known as the Canonical Five. What drives someone to commit murder? What drives an individual to be so brutal in their crimes? What type of education and civil life would an individual like this have? Each of these are questions which have been asked from the time of the murders to present day. The truth is we may never know, but we can speculate and give an educated guess. I've had and heard many theories of who this creature was over the years. I first began researching the Ripper as a freshman in high school for an English assignment, but the mystery around this figure ignited something inside me. It began to light the candle of curiosity within my mind so that I may consume all things Ripper related that I could try to understand what drove him. Who was he? Beyond a shadow of a doubt, in my mind, I believe I may have cracked the case of the Ripper. Jack the Ripper's murders were brutal. Often enough, he even managed to take a souvenir from each of the crimes. 1888 Whitechapel itself was a ghetto of sorts, home to immigrants, people of low income, and crime. It would be considered similar to Detroit, Michigan, or the slums of LA and New York today. So I ask, what would drive a man to perform such acts on someone who is already down and out? Somebody whose only choice for work is that of prostitution. In 1988, John Douglas and Roy Hazelwood of the FBI were asked to use their acquired knowledge and collected data to prepare a psychological profile of the Ripper. This was made especially for the television documentary The Secret Identity of Jack the Ripper, according to the JackTheRipperTour.com. In their criminal profile, they decided that Taking all the known evidence, eyewitness statements, and police reports, they looked once again at the Jack the Ripper murders. They concluded the following features of the profile. He was a local, resident male in his late 20s, probably employed because the murders generally occurred on the weekends. He was single, without family ties, because the murders took place between midnight and 6 a.m. Jack was of low class because the murders showed lack of care and attention to detail. He wasn't surgically skilled or possessing of anatomical knowledge. He was probably known to the police as a past offender and seen by family and acquaintances as a loner. It's possible he was abused or deserted as a child by his mother. This modern day criminal profile closely matches that of one given by Dr. Thomas Bond at the time of the murders on November 10th, 1888. His profile read as, Jack was probably middle-aged, probably not in regular employment, physically strong, quiet and inoffensive in appearance. He may have been neatly and respectably dressed, probably lacked anatomical knowledge, possibly solitary or loner, and maybe even eccentric or odd in behavior. As you can see, both of those profiles, taken a hundred years apart, pretty closely match each other. Could it be that the later profilers had knowledge of the original? We may never know. But given a case like the Jack the Ripper murders, it's a high possibility. With that being said, I have a similar take on the profile of the killer. 
I believe he may have been in his mid to late 20s. It's possible that he had felt love at one time, but the majority of his life was without it, and thus he sought out the arms of prostitutes, only to also be rejected by them. In the dark of night, he may have been seen as anyone else from a distance, which allowed him to get close to his victims. There's a high possibility that he was a loner or solitary, perhaps even introverted. Given the style of the murders, he was most likely left-handed, lived nearby, probably had a gentle public nature with a deep-seated rage. And also given the style of the murders, he would have had access to surgical and medical tools. With three separate profiles of Jack the Ripper, we are now one step closer to discovering who may have slaughtered the five canonical victims during the late hours of those dangerous autumn nights back in 1888. In the next video, we'll dive deep into the murders of the canonical five. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and share. Also make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss out on our next Ripper episode.